All right guys, so a lot of you may not know that I do, or at least I enjoy doing photography. And one of the things I've always wanted to do is kind of show a, uh, a video of how some I do, how I do some of my shots. So I haven't done a lot of photography in the last couple of years just because there's been so much going on, but uh, I still want to do more. So uh, got to run some errands. It is New Year's Eve, so there's not a lot going on or a lot open and I can't get out into the woods. So I want to go do a quick shot of the Forerunner just to kind of show um, how I do some of my shots. And I have an idea in town of where I can make things happen. Um, so I'm just gonna drive around, run a couple errands and see where I can stop. So don't roast me for doing this in town. Uh, again, this is gonna be quick. I'm gonna be gone from the house for less than an hour making this video. So uh, like I said, I'm gonna run these couple errands. I'm gonna find a couple places to stop or at least one place and take you along and then show you the photo and the uh, process to get to it. So. It's starting to rain, of course, but <laughs> that's fine. We'll get through it. So uh, next stop, someplace. All right, so there's this giant parking lot. It's actually a field that they use for event parking um, in the summertime that the gate was open to. It has been open for a while, um, even though it is a field with kind of paved gravel roads. I'm not going to drive in the grass because I don't know if you're supposed to and just out of respect for whatever, I'm going to stay on the actual roads. But I'm going to park over in this giant mud puddle and then get out and kind of show you what I'm gonna do but let's get parked and then I'll take you outside all right so doing this kind of quick I'm sorry if the perspective isn't good but I've only got two hands so it's running but the keys are out and there's nobody around gonna shoot the shot with XT2 to 16 to 55 there's a cop coming but again I don't think I'm in any trouble so kind of parked in a weird spot, but I was hoping to get enough distance between the forerunner and the background to blur it out. And I'll kind of show you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna overexpose just a touch. And I like to zoom in some, doing this pretty quick because it's just kind of a quick and dirty shot here All right, so let's just make sure I've overexposed it a little bit and I'll show you why when we get to a computer, F2.8. That I think will work. I'm gonna grab one more, Shoot like this just in case. That might actually be the better shot right there. Okay, again, Fuji X-T2, 16 to 55. Shot those anywhere between, I don't know, 35 and 55. F2.8 to try to blur the background out a little bit try to utilize this reflection on the ground so that's that you know, I'm gonna get one while I'm up close here all right so I grabbed a couple shots just to show uh, again, didn't spend much time, but a couple so we have something to work with. So let's run some errands and get back home and plug these into the computer, see what we can make happen. You know, there's two cops, but again, they hang out here, so I'm not doing anything wrong. At least I don't think I am. And if I am, I'm sure they'll be polite about it because I'll be polite right back. So let's go run our errands and get back to the house. All right, so ran errands, got home, um, imported a few of the images into Lightroom, just grabbed a couple quick ones. 
sorry this isn't uh, like a screen capture because I don't actually know how to capture the screen on this computer. So I've just got the GoPro set up. I'm out in the garage where there's no noise or hopefully a little noise. And I've tried to angle it to where there's no uh, glare, or at least too much glare. So All right, so this is actually the second try. The computer had an issue after I fully got this picture done in a uh, previous recording. But anyways, uh, got home, took the pictures off the camera and imported them to Lightroom. Uh, none of them perfect because you saw how fast it was. It's kind of just a down and dirty, just get this done to show what we can do. Uh, kind of went through and I picked this one and this is it straight out of the camera uh, without edited. Um, so here we are in Lightroom. Uh, my first step, is and a lot of people hate this i actually give auto a try auto usually gets it pretty close um and on this we don't care about the sky because i'm actually going to replace the sky but uh, i got it pretty close i don't like how just do a couple fine adjustments on it again i'm really only concerned about the forerunner itself um but that should get us where we want to be a little bit of color and just a touch more contrast. Okay, so um, as it is, that's pretty good. That's a decent shot of the forerunner right there. It's it's dirty and we were running errands, but uh, gives you an idea. So again, shot this with a Fuji X-T2 and a 16 to 55 f2.8. Um, so pretty decent combo. Not the latest and greatest, but it works. So that in itself right there is a decent picture. Um, and we will probably, you know what, in fact, let's just make a copy of it now because we might just use that for something else. So created a virtual copy. And what I want to do now is I'm going to take this and I'm going to edit in Photoshop. So we're going to put it right into Photoshop 2021. Um, and again, I've already done this, so I know how simple it's going to be to do a quick one. But normally there would be a lot of masking involved to kind of change the sky out and do all this sky replacement stuff but lightroom has a sky replacement feature that works pretty decent and for something that we're not going to print we're just kind of going to post it on social media or what have you it tends to work so there's our image um so i'm going to show you a couple tricks to do first things first this is how it edited just now out of lightroom so instead of masking everything and changing the sky we're just going to go to edit and sky replacement and photoshop uses its ai which they call sensei uh, kind of determines what the sky is, masks everything else out, and gets it pretty close. And that's what it did. It literally took this lightning storm sky that I've had. Um, actually, I can't remember if it's one that comes with Photoshop or one that I put in there. But anyways, and it plugs into the sky. And it did a pretty good job masking the trees and everything. We might fine-tune it a little bit. So I'm going to go... Uh, I want to take a little bit of the blue out of it. A little bit more. Brighten it up just a touch. Like that. Scale it just a little bit bigger because I kind of want to crop the dark part out. So if we do this. I also look at how the trees, so the trees and shrubbery is the hardest part for it to mask. And it did a pretty decent job, but sometimes I just try to match the background, you know, what was the background with the new one. So I try to get that lighter part down there so it actually looks pretty decent. I don't think we need to change too much here actually looks good all right so i'm just gonna leave it like that that was pretty simple now here is the trick whenever there's reflections photoshop doesn't put uh the sky replacement into the reflections uh, supposedly that's going to be in a future update i know there's other software that claims it can do it but there's an easy way to do it in photoshop now so uh, i go over to the layers and i lock the adjustment layers and the masks for the sky replacement group. And then I go edit, uh, I'm sorry, image, image rotation, flip canvas vertical. And that is gonna make the top, the bottom, and the bottom, the top. So there is basically upside down. And then edit, and we're gonna do that same sky replacement. And because we didn't change anything, it's gonna use the same sky replacement as last time. The Photoshop AI is going to try to determine the sky up top, which it did, 
pretty close and it doesn't have to be perfect on this because it's a reflection and we're going to kind of fade it out anyways. Um, I'm going to scale it up just a little bit like the last one. The adjustments don't matter too much, but I'm going to drag it a little bit to get that lightning kind of showing through there so that it's... There we go. So now we've got a reflection of the sky in the water. Uh, say OK. Same thing on that sky replacement group because it created a whole nother one. We lock the adjustment layers and the masks. And then we go back to image, image rotation, flip vertical, and it's going to put it right side up. And there it is with our reflection down here. So what I do, I know this isn't a very realistic photo, but to make it a little more realistic, is I grab that reflection sky, the whole group, and I change the opacity down some, because it doesn't have to be as defined as the actual sky. So I'm about, eh, let's see, where do we want to be? So about 73%. So just kind of faded it out a little bit, but it gives a little bit of the reflection of the lightning and some of the, the darker clouds. Makes it a little more believable. All right, so that's pretty good right there. I can tell when I get it back into Lightroom, I'm gonna crop some of the top of this off. But for now, I wanna get rid of this minivan over here that was driving by and try to do something about these houses. So if we go and make sure we select our background layer, let's zoom in a little bit on this car. So we can see what we're working with. This is going to be real quick, down and dirty. We're going to just use the selection tool. We're going to select that minivan. And if we go to, I believe it's edit. No, let's be under image. Sorry, I can never remember where things are in here. I'm looking for the... Uh, the fill. Oh, now I can't find it. So back to edit. Oh, here it is. It is under edit and content aware fill. And so what that will do is Lightroom will use its AI sensei to find something else in the image that can paste over that the best it thinks to make it just go away. And there's a lot better, faster ways to select items more detailed. But again, this is a car in the background, kind of in the shade. Um, we're in the shadows, probably not going to ever notice it, but I'm going to do this, content to work fill, it's going to do its thing, it's locating it, this window kind of shows us, and it selected another portion. I'm going to do this real quick though, because I think it selected somebody, a person, it doubled up that person, so we're just going to erase that. There we go. Okay, so the car was right in here and it is no more say okay and the car is gone now well, it will be in a second and it's gone um, and then I'm gonna try to do the same thing to these houses so gotta make sure we select the background layer I'm gonna use the lasso tool and let's grab some of these houses thank you yay. Not too confident that it's going to do this as good. Content to wear fill. We might have to erase the parts of the foreigner that it's trying to select from. No, it did pretty good. It's gone. That's where the houses were. I'm just going to say okay to that. It's amazing how far this uh, technology has come. And we'll go edit. I'm sorry, select, deselect. And let's zoom back out. And I think that's probably where I'm going to leave it before I mess with it too much. Um, if I was really trying to take the time to make something print worthy, I would get rid of all these light bulbs. Actually, I would have started with a little better photo. I would have taken more time to position it how I wanted and, and kind of hide things. But I think that's going to do that. So uh, let's take it back into Lightroom. So if we go File, Save, it's going to error out again. All right, so... Given I'm trying to make this video so Photoshop knows not to work right and it's not letting me save this image. So normally you just hit file, save, it'll be in Photoshop and you can continue to, or I'm sorry, it'd be in Lightroom, you can edit it however you want. But it is not letting me save it anywhere. It's giving me an error. So that's fine if this was a big, if I'd had hours into it, I'd be more upset. But again, it was just kind of a sample. So what I'm going to do is trick it or cheat 
Um, I just zoomed into the photo a little bit to where I want it, and I'm going to use basically a screenshot, a snipping tool. I take a new snip, and I'm just going to cheat. Select that part of the screen. This is a 4K screen, so it'll give me a decently high resolution. And then from here, I should do File, Save As. Let's go to the desktop. We're just going to leave it as Capture. And that saved it. So it is kind of weird. And watch, if I try to save it in Photoshop, save before closing, save it there. It's going to give me this error message. Cannot save as, etc., etc., because of a program error. And it won't let me save it in any format. So if anybody knows what that's all about, let me know. Because we're basically just going to ditch this now because I've saved that JPEG just to kind of show. So we'll close Photoshop. Say no, because it won't let us save it. And here is our capture. So, again, uh, a pretty down and dirty, just a quick edit, just to show you guys what can be done. You know, this had, if I wouldn't have fought the computer, it wouldn't have taken very long, but, you know, this was taken a couple miles from home while I was running errands. So, uh, I'll post it up, probably gonna share it on social media. If you guys wanna see more of these videos with a little more or better quality photography let me know because i would love to do more of these um, not just with the forerunner but other things i've got a whole uh, portfolio of stuff that i've done over the years and i'm going to do more um, so if you want to go like my photography instagram as well i'll post it in the comments below um, but again thanks for watching this is kind of just a quick uh, down and dirty here's what we can do to make a cool picture uh, something to do on a New Year's Eve day. Hope everybody has a great 2021. Stay safe celebrating tonight. I know we are. We're just going to stay home. Um, so, again, thanks for watching.